Hey guys, and welcome to The Family Fudge. I'm Jennifer, and in today's video, I'm continuing this series that I call, Look What I Made With Dot Dot Dot. Now, I know it has been a hot minute since I've made one of these videos, so I am super excited to be bringing it back today. In the last episode, I shared all kinds of recipes using a fun Fetty cake mix. So if you are a fan of sprinkles, definitely go check out that video. But of course, in today's video, the star ingredient is crescent dough. I'm gonna be using the Pillsbury crescent dough, but of course you can use generic or any brand that you prefer. And if your area of the world doesn't have crescent dough in a can like this, you could try using puff pastry dough, or you can make some crescent dough from scratch. Now, honestly, I love this Pillsbury crescent dough, hashtag not sponsored, but there really are so many creative and quick recipes that you can make if you have a can of this stuff. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a breakfast idea, a lunch idea, an appetizer, a dinner, and make sure you stay tuned for the dessert because I think that is my personal favorite. Now, if you love fun and creative recipes, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I hope that you'll be inspired to make one of these recipes yourself. Okay guys, so to start off, I'm going to be making these sausage and cheese breakfast squares. Now, I've seen my friend Fallon over at Moss Family TV make these quite a lot, so this recipe is definitely inspired by hers, but I've made just a few changes to my recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do is cook up one pound of breakfast sausage. Today I'm using a turkey sausage, but you could use whatever kind of breakfast sausage you prefer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook this sausage all the way through. I am gonna go ahead and break it up into small pieces. And even though this turkey sausage isn't super greasy, I am gonna go ahead and drain out all the excess liquid. After I've drained the sausage, I'm gonna go ahead and add it back into my pan. And then I'm going to add one block of cream cheese. Now I decided to use the light cream cheese. Now I'm just going to keep mixing this in until it's fully combined. And I know at this point it's not looking super appetizing, but trust me, it's going to be delicious. For my next step, I'm going to take a 9 by 13 baking pan and I'm going to spray that with some non-stick spray. Then I'm going to open up the first can of crescent dough. Now the idea is to roll this out so that it's covering the bottom of our baking pan. And you guys, if you're using the crescent dough where you need to pinch it together, now would be the time to do that. So I'm just going to press this down so it's as even as it can be. Then I'm going to add the sausage and cream cheese mixture. Now that I've kind of evenly dispersed the sausage and cream cheese, I'm just going to gently spread it out so that it's one nice layer. And I am being gentle because I don't want to disturb the crescent dough that's on the bottom. Next comes the cheese. Now I'm using about two cups of sharp cheddar cheese. But what is super great about this recipe is that it's totally customizable. So if you wanted to use mozzarella or pepper jack cheese, you definitely could swap it out and make this recipe your own. So now that I have my cheese layer on there, the next step is to add the other sheet of crescent dough. And this part can be a little bit tricky. I definitely think the sheet of crescent dough is much easier to deal with at this point than the little triangles would be. So I'm just going to roll this out all over the top. I'm gonna to do my best to kind of tuck in the edges. Now at this point, you could go ahead and pop it in the oven, but I have a few extra steps that I like to add. In a separate bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and crack one egg. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this up really well. Then I'm going to brush this all over the top of our crescent dough. This egg wash really helps the top get nice and golden brown, and it's also going to help our last ingredient stick to the top. And speaking of the last ingredient, I'm going to finish this off with a good sprinkling of some everything but the bagel seasoning. Now, it used to be that you could only find this stuff at Trader Joe's, and I know not everybody has a Trader Joe's, but recently I've been finding this kind of seasoning just about everywhere. And if you really can't find it, you can definitely make your own. It's just a mixture of sesame seeds, poppy seeds, garlic, onion, and salt. 
I seriously add this to so many of my dishes, especially if I'm baking something for breakfast. It is delicious. So now I'm going to get this into my preheated oven at 375 and I'm going to cook this for about 16 to 18 minutes. And you guys, here is the final product. It is golden brown and it's making my entire house smell like a bakery. It is so good. Now I like to cut these in little squares so they can be eaten kind of like a finger food. These are perfect for breakfast, but you could definitely eat this for lunch or dinner. I like to serve these with a side of fresh fruit and a little bit of salsa or ketchup to dip them in. Now, moving on to lunch, I'm going to be making some kid-friendly buffalo chicken roll-ups. And you guys, my trick to making this kid-friendly and not too spicy is to use this creamy buffalo wing dipping sauce. This is made by Sweet Baby Ray's. It tastes just like regular wing sauce, but it's a lot milder, so definitely kid-friendly. For this recipe, I'm going to start by chopping up about two cups of cooked chicken. Now I'm using just some leftover chicken that I had, and I am going to chop this up pretty small so that the pieces fit well in our roll up. So once I have all of my chicken chopped up, I'm going to add that to a mixing bowl and then move on to the celery. Now of course I think celery and buffalo wings go so well together. For this recipe, I'm going to use about a quarter cup of celery, and I do want to go ahead and chop these pretty fine as well. Now in this recipe the celery does stay a little bit crunchy which I think adds a really good texture to this dish but if you are opposed to crunchy celery you could definitely saute these for a few minutes before adding them in. Next to my mixing bowl I'm going to be adding some low-fat cream cheese but in this recipe you only need about two ounces not the whole thing. Again this cream cheese is room temperature so it's going to mix in really easily and now at this point I can go ahead and add the buffalo sauce and you guys this part is totally to your taste I'm gonna add about two to four tablespoons of this buffalo wing sauce you can add however much you prefer and you can even use the real spicy stuff if you're into that and then last but not least I'm also gonna be adding about one tablespoon of some ranch dressing in here I think the combination of ranch and buffalo sauce is really good together it just helps add a little bit of extra flavor in here and of course my kids love ranch so now at this point I'm going to mix everything together and I'm gonna recommend at this point you give it a little taste since everything is cooked in here it's totally safe but you just want to give it a taste because you might want to add more hot sauce and if you do now would be the time to do that I ended up adding about two more tablespoons of the buffalo wing sauce because I wanted to have the buffalo flavor but I didn't want it to be too spicy for the kids so now it's time for our crescent dough. And for this recipe, I am using the crescent dough sheet. Now to this dough, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of flour on top. That way I can roll this dough out just a little bit with my rolling pin. And I do have this on some parchment paper just so that nothing sticks. So as I'm rolling this out, I'm not trying to get it much thinner or much bigger. I just want it to be a little bit thinner. That way it cooks a lot more evenly and the center of these rolls won't be left doughy. So now at this point, I can go ahead and add the buffalo chicken filling. And this is basically like making savory cinnamon rolls at this point. I'm gonna spread the filling all over the dough. And once I have that all spread out, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cheddar cheese right on the top. This cheese is going to add extra flavor, but as it melts, it's also going to help keep our buffalo chicken roll up rolled up. It's gonna act kind of as a binder or a glue in this dish. Next, I'm going to cut them into pieces and then place them into my baking pan. And I did go ahead and spray this with a little bit of nonstick spray so that nothing would stick. And I was able to get about 11 rolls out of this recipe. I'm gonna cook these at 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. You definitely don't wanna undercook these. 
They should be nice and browned on the top when they're done. Okay guys, so here's how they look right out of the oven. And yes, you definitely could dig in right at this point, but to make these a little bit extra, I've just melted a little bit of butter and mixed it with some of the buffalo wing sauce. And I'm just going to brush this all over the top of the rolls. This is gonna give extra flavor, but it's also going to make sure that the tops of these rolls don't get all dried out. And now here they are guys, the final product. I love to serve these with extra veggies on the side and maybe a little bit of extra ranch for dipping. Okay guys, next up I'm going to be making these better than takeout cheesy garlic breadsticks. This is probably one of the easiest recipes of this entire video and this would be a great recipe to have your kids help you make. I'm going to start by taking about one and a half cups of shredded cheese and I'm going to add that to a mixing bowl. To this, I'm also going to be adding about two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. And then to season this up, I'm also going to be adding about half a teaspoon of garlic powder. If you really love garlic, you could add more or you could even use fresh garlic. And then I'm also going to be adding about half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all together. I just wanna make sure that the garlic and the herbs are evenly dispersed. Well, as even as possible. Now at this point, I can go ahead and add the cheese to my crescent dough. This is just one can of crescent dough, and I put it on top of some parchment paper so that it wouldn't stick. And as I'm adding the cheese on here, I'm trying to keep all of the cheese just on one half of the dough, and I am going to leave out about a quarter cup of this mixture because it's gonna go on top before I bake it. Now you guys, I did tell you that this recipe is super easy because at this point, all you have to do is fold your dough over and then you're gonna want to brush a little bit of egg wash to the top of this dough as well and sprinkle the remaining cheese right on top. I'm going to add this to my oven at 375 for about 18 to 20 minutes. And at about the halfway mark, I do like to go ahead and take it out of the oven and sort of score the pieces like this. And that's really what's gonna help create bread sticks. Once this is done, it will be a nice golden brown color. And with the herbs and the garlic in there, your entire house is going to smell amazing. Now, if you are a fan of cheese, you will definitely love these. Check out that cheese pull. These are so quick and easy to make. I like to serve these with some veggies on the side and a little bit of marinara sauce for dipping. Now moving on to a very special dinner idea. I'm gonna be making a classic taco ring. Now this is a recipe that's been around for a long, long time. It is super delicious. It looks impressive, but it's actually really easy to make. For this recipe, I'm going to start by browning up one pound of turkey. Now you definitely could use beef or whatever kind of meat you like. If you are using beef, you're probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and drain off the excess grease and then you can go ahead and add in some taco seasoning. This is about a quarter cup of taco seasoning. To this, I'm also going to add about a quarter cup of water. Then I'm going to mix this all together and cook this on low for about five minutes. So now that the taco meat is done, I wanna go ahead and prepare my pan. This is a large cookie sheet, and I do wanna spray this with some non-stick spray. And you guys, for this recipe, I'm actually gonna be using two cans of crescent dough, but you do not wanna use the crescent dough sheets for this. And as you can see, that's because you're actually gonna be taking each little triangle, and you're going to place them in a circle, kind of overlapping like this. Like I said, it takes two cans of dough to make this. And once you're done, it should kind of look like a sun. Now I'm just gonna go around the edges and press them down slightly just to make sure that all stuck together. And this is also going to give me plenty of space to add in the filling. Right around the center, I'm going to add all of my taco meat. Once I have that on there, I'm also going to do the same thing with some salsa. This is just mild salsa. And I'm not even adding that much in here because I do want my kids to eat this. And if I put extra salsa, they probably wouldn't appreciate it. So now I'm going to finish this off with a sprinkling of cheese. 
And then here comes the fun part. I'm going to take each little triangle piece and bring it up and over the center, and I'm going to tuck it down in the middle. And I'm just going to continue this process all the way around the taco ring. Now, as you can see, this is not going to completely cover the filling. You are gonna see some peeking through just a little bit, and that's totally fine. That's what you want. Now you guys, this next part is totally optional, but you know I love to add an egg wash on top of my dough. It makes it nice and shiny and golden brown. Then I'm going to get this into my oven at 375 for 20 to 25 minutes. And check it out, you guys. This came out so good. It smells amazing. I know you're gonna wanna give this one a try for sure. I'm gonna serve this one with a little bit of salsa on the side. And then I'm going to basically build a little salad in the center as well. So in here I'm adding some shredded lettuce. I'm also going to add some tomatoes, some olives, and some cheese. Now you guys, I love this recipe, but I also really love this method of creating a stuffed ring. And you really could use this with lots of different recipes. You can make a breakfast version of this. You could make a dessert version of this. The options are endless. Now you guys, last but certainly not least, I'm gonna be sharing my favorite recipe out of the entire bunch, which is a crescent apple strudel braid. And you guys, this is another really simple recipe. There's only a few ingredients. Now for this, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a piece of parchment paper. I've added a little bit of flour to mine just to make sure that the dough doesn't stick. And for this recipe, you are gonna need one sheet of crescent dough. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open. For whatever reason, this one was giving me the hardest time. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I struggle to open up these things. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just roll this out just like most of these recipes start. Now because I am going to be braiding this bread, I do wanna to try to even up the edges as much as I can. I really think that that is key for making the end product look nice and neat. And whenever I'm making a braided stuffed dough, I imagine the dough kind of in three sections. You have two outer sections and then you have the strip down the middle. Now I'm just taking a little bamboo skewer and I'm kind of marking the line in my dough, but I'm not pressing all the way through. This is just a guide to make sure that this stays nice and straight. Well, as straight as I can get it. Next, you're gonna wanna cut some one inch strips on either ends of the dough. You can use a knife for this or a pizza cutter. Today I'm just using some kitchen scissors. And the idea is that you're gonna wanna have the same amount of strips on one side as you do on the other, and you're gonna wanna try to keep these strips as evenly spaced as you can get them. So once I have all of my strips done, this is what it looks like. And at this point, I'm going to actually set this aside, and I'm going to prepare the filling. To a separate bowl, I'm going to add in one can of apple pie filling. This store-bought stuff is ready to go. It's super quick and easy. And if you wanted to, you definitely could use cherry pie filling, strawberry pie filling or even blueberry if you're not a fan of apple but of course I love apple pie filling so I'm gonna go ahead and use that and to this filling I'm also going to add about a quarter cup of walnuts now if you don't like walnuts definitely leave those out but I really think it adds more of a homemade taste to this super simple dish. So now all I'm gonna do is add our apple pie filling mixture right down the center of the dough. And whenever I'm making one of these braided bread recipes, I try to not let any of the ingredients go very wide on the dough. I like to try to stack the ingredients as tall as I can instead. So as you can see, I'm really trying to create a nice big mound of filling right in the center. So now it's time to wrap up the dough. And you guys, this is not complicated at all. And it really doesn't even have to be perfect for this to taste delicious. What I'm gonna do is take the edge of the dough I'm gonna bring it up and over the end just like this. Then I'm going to take the first strip on this side and I'm going to bend it downwards. And I'm going to take the first strip on the other side and do the exact same thing. 
So basically I have a little cradle to keep our filling in. And now all you have to do is take each strip of dough, bring it up and over like this in a crisscross pattern. And you do wanna make sure to do one on one side, then switch to the other side and go back and forth like that until you're almost at the end. And now when I have about four strips of dough left on either side, I go ahead and stop at this point and I repeat the tucking in process that we did at the beginning on the other end. So the dough goes up and over the edge, then the two pieces of dough on the end get folded downwards. You're gonna wanna pinch off any extra dough. And then if my braid got a little bit crooked, I do try to straighten it out, flatten it out a little bit. Now, before I pop this into the oven, I'm also going to give this a light egg wash all over the top and then this next part is optional but I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this cinnamon toast crunch dust right on the top and you guys this cinnamon toast crunch dust is really just cinnamon and sugar mixed together this is gonna leave us with a nice shiny and sparkly crust right on the top of this apple strudel I'm gonna cook this at 375 for about 15 minutes and once it's out of the oven it's gonna look something like this now you guys, I really like using the crescent dough for this. Not only is it quick and easy, but the crescent dough itself is not sweet. So it really helps to balance out all of the sweetness in the apple pie filling. So in the end, you're left with a yummy dessert that is not overly sweet. But if you want to, you definitely could dress this up a little bit with a little sprinkling of powdered sugar on the top. This makes it look extra pretty. And if you wanted to make this totally over the top, you could definitely serve this warm with a little scoop of vanilla ice cream on the side and a drizzle of caramel on the top. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this looks like it came from some kind of fancy restaurant, but it was totally made quick and easy at home. And yeah, this one is definitely a crowd pleaser. And there you have it, guys. If you plan on making any of these tasty crescent dough recipes, I'll have all of the recipes links in the description box below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in my next video.